What's up guys, how you doing? This is Philip Starrett here and today I am at the top of the Dolomites in Italy and in this tutorial I am going to be talking about Duke so that's a Java Persistence Framework it allows you to generate some SQL it also will allow you to persist uh, your objects into your database I'm going to walk up here and show you some beautiful views over this way so this is a different video but I'm hoping the, the wind's not too bad here, I'm hoping my uh, mic's pretty good. So I'm just going to swing around if you can see the views. Let people get their photographs, you know. So this is going to be an introductory video. And I will be persisting into a few different uh, tables with some Java objects. Hopefully I don't get too close here. So this is about 3,000 3, meters. I'll be getting the, the cable car down now. So I hope you enjoy this video and What's take care. What's up guys, how you doing? This is Philip Starrett. And today's screencast, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you a bit of Duke. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is start up a Postgres instance. I'm then gonna connect to that via my Java application where I'm gonna be running my Maven plugin, which is gonna generate the Duke objects. Once we have the Duke object, um, we're gonna then do some selects, inserts, and uh, maybe some updates. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanna do is actually start up my Postgres instance. So I'm gonna move to my um, Postgres, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm open up Docker for Compose, and inside this, this is my little wee Docker file, and then I'm gonna basically copy this command from inside it, and there you go, that's me started up um, my Postgres instance. I can then go ahead and open up another terminal and then I'm going to open up a DB Visualizer which is the tool I use to visualize the database. So once that pops up you'll be able to actually see the database in the GUI and then what I'm going to do is connect to the accounts database which is the one I just started. We're then going to go into the record schema and I'm I have one table here called customers and inside this you can see that I have four columns and we're going to be working with these columns in the actual code base. So over here inside our code base, um, I'm just going to quickly go down to Palm and describe to you what's inside that. Well, what we have here is we have a carry, which is a high performance connection pool. I'm going to create another video on that after this video on this connection pool and on its benefits. It's absolutely amazing. And I, I use it in production right now with a lot of my uh, mission critical applications. Next thing we have is Duke. So we have three Duke dependencies. The bottom two are mainly used to generate all of our Duke objects, which I'll be showing you in a second. And the top dependency is the standard Duke core library. So the next one, what we have here is Postgres. That's the standard Postgres driver. We then have Lombok, which will enable us to generate bytecode via some annotations. So it'll stop us having the right, um, you know, like boilerplate code and whatnot. And then we have a simple uh, facade logging. So the main part of this video, um, first part of this video actually, is to generate the Duke objects that represent the customer uh, um, table in our database. So what I have to do there is I bring in the Duke CodeGen Maven plugin, and then what we're gonna do is execute the generate goal, and when that goal is executed, it's going to connect out to our accounts database, our Postgres database, um, with the user and password that I set up with that default account and it's going to look for the schema records which is where our table lives and it's going to generate um, the Duke objects for them tables and objects and this is where the output's going to be so let's go ahead and not waste time and um, actually go ahead and run Duke generate so as you can see there's a build success and underneath um, generated sources we have a folder called Duke and inside here we have our tables so we, here we have our customer table and we have our re customer record. So that's pretty cool, we have our Duke object. All right, so now that we have our Duke objects generated, I'm gonna go ahead here and just quickly show you what's inside this uh, create data source method. So this is basically how you set up a carry um, high performance connection pool. I'm basically setting up a connection to this 
uh, localhost port 4321, which I have Postgres running on, and we're connecting to the accounts database with the user and password, and we have auto commit basically set to true. So what do we want to do with this data source? Well, the first thing we're going to do is use Juke to actually select some data. So this is where we call DSL, so this is a Juke object. And then from this we can say using, we pass in the data source, and we also want to specify this SQL dialect of Postgres. So now once we have the SQL dialect for Postgres, we can go ahead and start writing the select. So we're going to say select from, and this is where we find the customers table. So select from customers. And go, oh, actually that's the, the wrong one. So it's customers. This is that. And then what we're going to say is where. And then we're going to say customer ID equals a certain field. So here we can say customers dot customers dot customer ID. As you can see, this is all great. We're getting a nice fluent DSL for this, so we can't we cannot make a mistake. And we say equal, and as you can see there, it's a field which is a UUID. So here we have to actually pass in a UUID. So I'm going to say from string, and at this point we can go back to the database and go back into the accounts database. I'm going to connect to customer again, open a new tab, see the data, and I want to select it Philip. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the ID for Philip. And I can pass it in here. I'm going to bring in a static import. I'm going to collapse these and bring in static imports for customer as well, to make that a bit smaller. So see here I'm doing a basically a select. Select from customers where customer ID equals that. That's cool. And then we can just write dot fetch any. Save that. And then what that's going to do is return us a customer record. And from that customer record, I just want to print that out. So I'm going to use Lombok logger here, which is SLF4J logger. And I'm going to say customer record in the customer record and we go ahead and play this and we should see Philip. So play, there you go, as you can see I have Philip, Philip Baggins 51 and there's the ID and that should be the data. So that's how easy it is to select data with Juke. It's nice, it's a DSL, you cannot make mistakes because you can only pass in what you've generated from the database. So it's really, really nice and of course with this customer record you can get the values out of that. You can get age, you can get surname, first name, customer ID, whatever you want. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is showing you some updates. So let's go ahead and write up. So the first thing what I want to do is can go and say dsl.using. I'm basically going to just copy this line that we had at the top here. So now we're using dsl. And what we want to say is, <coughs> pardon me. And we're going to say insert into, and again we're going to use the customers table. So insert into customers, and here what we're going to do is say set field. So we're going to say set, and we're going to say customers dot, and we'll say customer ID, and here we can say UID dot random UID, and here we're going to say set say customers dot age, whatever, however you spell this, customers.age, and we'll say 50, we'll say set customers.first name, and we'll set it to fill, and then we'll say set customers.surname, and we'll say Jones, that's the surname, so that's pretty cool, then we can go ahead and actually write the execute field if we want. So I'm going to save that. Um, we will execute that in the database. And we should see a Phil Jones, which we do. So that's pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is actually take the idea of this. And then what I'm going to do is something pretty, pretty sweet. So I'm going to say from UID. So you may think now this is going to cause a duplicate key because we have the key on the ID and we're going to set the ID to the ID, which is true, it will cause a duplicate key. So what we're going to say is on conflict and when there's a conflict, which is going to be that duplicate key, 
we want to perform an update and once we perform that update what we want to do is update the customer's age to 51 and we save that and let's go ahead and run that again so now that's run go back database refresh and now you can see phil's phil jones was updated to 51 so that's a um, pretty cool feature of 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 Duke, the update there. Now that's, um, of course, that's a Postgres uh, on config clause, but uh, I'm just using it in Duke to show you how sweet it is to use that. Now say you actually don't want to execute that, you want to actually just um, look at the SQL. So here what we can say is get SQL, and inside here we can pass in the param type, and what we can do is say inline, and what that's going to do is actually give us back a nice pretty cool SQL string. So if I go in here and say SQL, and I pass in this, and then I rerun this, we should now see the SQL output that would actually execute. So I can go ahead and copy that, and let me just dump it in here, so maybe you can see it a bit better. So of course you can see the SQL that that's gonna run is insert into customers, customer ID, first name, the values there, and on conflict go ahead and update that so that's how you can actually see what sql is going to be executed with duke maybe you can use duke to generate a big complex query and then you can actually call dot sql and maybe use that sql in the likes of stored procedures or whatever else you're doing in your enterprise system so i hope you guys enjoyed this very very quick overview of duke and how it's really really awesome how you can use the fluent dsl to really make really cool queries and make your java code really really nice and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed it and watch the next video which will be on hikari high performance connection pill where i'm going to dive into that in detail so i will see you in the next video guys take care and i'm out